Hi, welcome to lesson one of week two of Julia Programming for Nervous Beginners, in which we talk about arithmetic. So, uh, this course is about text, not really about number crunching, but you really do need some competence with arithmetic because it happens in almost all uh, programming projects. So, our aim is just to uh, illustrate and describe the rules uh, for Julia's rules for arithmetic. And that means you'll be able to name and type the five arithmetic operators after this lesson. You'll be able to use parentheses to ensure that an arithmetic expression is not ambiguous. And you'll be able to combine the values, the names, the operators, and the delimiters to make valid arithmetical expressions. So it's still the same idea of a formal language. You have to obey the rules of the formal language, make valid expressions, and then Julia will evaluate those. Um, so let's take a look at some examples in the REPL. Um, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1,000 plus 2,000 is 3,000, and so on. Um, we can have um, 1 over 2 plus 1, and Julia will give us a value if we do that. But notice that Julia can either do the um, addition first and then the divide, or the other way around. And um, you might think that Julia is doing it because it's going from left to right, so it's division first and then plus, but now in this expression it will be plus first and then division. But the answer actually is the same both times. So Julia has a set of rules for that. We recommend that you don't try and uh, work out, or rather learn, all the rules that Julia uses. It's a, a long set of rules. It takes quite a lot of doing. And this course is not about number crunching. If in the future you need to write lots of long expressions, it might be worth learning. But for the moment, we are only going to have short expressions on this course, and so you don't need them. What you need instead, if you want the addition first, is to put it in parentheses. You see that if we did the addition first in the uh, in the um, in the first example we did, we will have one over two plus one, and that will be one third. Here we have 1 plus 1 over 2. Um, so um, let's uh, think of um, the possibility of solving a quadratic equation. So let's say we have uh, minus 5 plus the square root of, uh, say, 25 minus 9. Uh, that's to the, the square root, so we have to have the to the power of a half, and uh, we have to put that in parentheses as well, and um, and then we want to divide that say by two. Um, Julia, uh, you remember that you can create characters in this way by having the backslash followed by letters that give you the code for something. So this is, as in later, is the code for the square root sign. So if you tab this, you do get the square root sign. It turns out that you can actually use this in, uh, in here. So if instead of wanting this square root, so if we take out the square root, then and we take that out, we can put a square root sign there. So what we see here is that the square root is applied to item that's in parentheses here, and then we add that to 5, and that's parentheses there, and then we put that whole expression, that's a third parenthesis, and we divide the whole thing by 2. As, oh, it says that there's an extra one. And if we divide by 2, and that's right. So we can count. We open parentheses once, twice, close it to, from back down to 1, close 1 to 0, and then we divide by 2. And so 
this is something that um, you just have to get used to if you want to use a lot of arithmetic. You just have to put in all those um, parentheses, round brackets. Um, you can, other, other kinds of brackets do appear, but if you were to say, try and use square brackets around this whole expression, um, then you get something different. So what happens is that this gets put into an array and then the whole array gets divided by two. We don't recommend that you do this kind of arithmetic on arrays. Um, the expression minus four is meaningful. Otherwise, if we want to use operators, say plus and divide and plus, we have to use numbers. So we can have two times uh, 22, if we like, times three, divide by seven plus eight. Um, and Julia will evaluate this for us. If we, however, want to make sure that we do the um, parentheses, say we want to make sure that this is being divided by eight, um, and we can put parentheses there, it's 22 times three. So then this is 66 divided by 15, and it comes out as 4.4. So as I said, um, if you type uh, a, um, an operator, then normally you expect that there'll be a number on each side of the operator to the left and the right. And the exception is something like minus, where you have minus four, that can be minus four. And indeed you can do the same with plus, uh, like that. And you can even um, have, uh, plus minus four, it's still minus four, minus minus four, eight doesn't like that. But if I put uh, parentheses around it, that, so you can see that when we try to do this code, Julia wasn't sure whether this was to be interpreted as two per operators or as one. If we do it like that, then there's no doubt. But as I say, this has got um, things that could be, if we put the parentheses here, what could that possibly mean? That probably is going to give us an error, and it does. Uh, if we put the four, then it still gives us an error. So um, that gives us uh, some stuff about the arithmetic operators. To ensure that an arithmetic expression does what you want it to do, that's the story of all these uh, parentheses. And um, there are ways in which Julia knows uh, its own way. So Julia has a way of making sure that every expression has a unique value by applying these rules. And if you learn those rules, you can predict what the unique value should be, but it isn't always easy to apply. Um, if you use the brackets, the round brackets, then you can ensure that the expression does what you want it to do. This can be difficult for long expressions, but that's true even if you apply these rules. On this course, you don't have to have long expressions, and so we recommend that you simply use brackets instead of trying to learn the rules. Um, so here is a situation. We have um, we have the values one and four. Now we want them to take values, so we can put a plus there, and we can put a minus, and we can put a multiply, and we can put uh, let's put the multiply, and we can put divide. And of course, if we want the negative values, we can just put these in parentheses and put a minus in front, and we get the negative values. So this gives us eight values. And if we take it to a power, we get two more.
But if we make this into minus 4, it's still minus 1. You can see there's a difference because this is um, a 1.0 and this is a 1. We'll talk about the difference between a 1 and a 1.0 in a minute. But Julia has given us a different result here, which we'll need to be talking about. Although, in a sense, they are equal to each other because they're just minus 1. Uh, there's a difference in how they're written, and that indicates an important difference we'll talk about later. Um, of course, as in all the other things, we can, we can use variables to supply the values we want. So if we say um, 3, 3, 2, 1, um, then we can say, well, what is the square root? <laughs> so if we say ABC is 3, 2, 1, we can just say um, A plus B over C. And of course, that is equal to 5. Um, or we can say A times B uh, minus C. As you see, this white space is usually is only sometimes important in Julia. In arithmetic expressions, it doesn't matter whether we add it or not. It's often good to add a little bit of white space here and there because it makes your expressions easier to read. Um, so uh, let's say they are, we have AX squared plus BX plus C. So 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Then the, we have minus, uh, we divide this by 2a, 2 times a, and we have b minus or plus, let's start with plus, and then it must be the square root, so we'll do that to the power a half, and inside is b squared minus 4 times a times c. And it doesn't like it. It says there's a domain error with minus 8 because we are yielding a complex result. This is because b squared minus 4ac is negative. b squared is 2 and AC is 3 times 1, so this is uh, 4 minus 12 is minus 8. So an easy solution is just to make that minus 1, and then we get that the result is 1. The other root has a minus there, and we can do that. Recall that uh, we can enter um, symbols and characters of our own choice. So that's um, in LaTeX, how you enter the square root character. And of course, we have to tab it to get it. So Julia allows us to use the square root character. So we can get rid of this by the power to the half. And we can put a square root character there. And it's still the same. So one last thing is that we can replace 2 times a by 2a. So this is one of the nice things in Julia, that uh, things look a little bit more like ordinary mathematics. And 4a can be like that. Um, I'm using the rule here that, that you uh, multiply first. But essentially, I should do that with 4ac, and I should perhaps even do that. If I want to add all the parentheses, I can add. So it gets to be quite a few parentheses, even in a relatively simple expression. But um, as we say, we are not really talking about arithmetic expressions in this course, so don't worry about it too much. 
So uh, arithmetic expressions, of course, combine numbers and operators. And by numbers, we mean also variables whose value are just numbers. The arithmetic operations, the plus sign for adding, the minus sign for subtracting, the asterisk for multiplying, the forward slash for dividing, and the caret for raising to a power. All of these are formed just like in standard mathematics. You start with a number, you end with a number, and exactly one operator between two adjacent numbers, except that if you just have a number by itself, you can have a minus in front. And finally, expressions with many numbers and operators, they can be ambiguous, and you should err on the side of caution and add enough pairs of parentheses to ensure that only one interpretation of the computation is possible. That's the end of uh, lesson one of week two.